Oh, shit. Hello, I am Raina, the Witch of What the Fuck, and today I am going to show you as much as possible in as short a time as possible. I am filming on Christmas Eve here in balmy Wisconsin, where it is a glorious 10 degrees. That's extremely cold in Celsius. I don't know. Enjoy looking that up and <laughs> being very glad that you're not here. We got a beautiful uh, layer of snow, so it's a nice white Christmas. So at least we have that. Today's pour is all this little piggy pigments. Yes, that's what they're called, this little piggy. I tried to call them this little pigments before and got corrected. So yeah, this little piggy pigments. You can't get them in any store, so you have to order them from their website specifically. And I've got that linked down below in the description beneath the video. This is not a sponsored video. I just really, really like this stuff and I use it a bunch. And I thought I would share the Rainbow colored happiness. The first color I'm painting with today is this little piggy in Sangria. This is a newer color in their line and it's a gorgeous Sangria color. <laughs> kind of a sparkly, purpley mauve, dark fuchsia. Quite lovely. The second color, my favorite of all because it is electric hot pink. This is groovy. This is amazing. I'm gonna try mixing this soon with an iridescent medium and seeing what happens because I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. Haven't tried it yet though, so look for a future video on that. Golden peach. This is a glorious golden peach color, <laughs> very aptly named, where it's a little pink, a little orange, and a little gold, and it is gorgeous. And it goes really, really well with so many colors, particularly light green, lavender, pretty much anything. It's just universally flattering. It's like this ring light that I'm using. It's a universally flattering, right? Techno. This stuff is extremely fun. So Groovy and Techno, which are these extremely electric fluorescent neon colors. These are the only ones in the line so far that don't have any of the sparkly mica in them, but that's okay. They are awesome and they look amazing under black light. So if you like black light stuff, those are great to try. Lily pad, a beautiful shimmery green, as you can see. Most of these pigments look about the same mixed as they do in the jar, which is nice because it's pretty easy to mix your colors or choose what colors you're gonna use. And for my painting today, I'm just kind of going by the seat of my pants. I had a vision of a rainbow that was not quite a rainbow, but mixed like a rainbow flame. You know? very flamey and wavy and rainbowy. If you wanna know what the inside of my brain looks like, that's it, pretty much all the time. All right, lakeside. Though there is some debate because this might also be mermaid. <laughs> they look pretty similar. Lakeside's a little darker, mermaid's a little lighter. And I didn't actually write down which one I was using when I filmed this, so your guess is as good as mine, but I think I think it's lakeside. Anyway, it's a beautiful barrier between your green and your bright blue to make teal, my favorite color, teal, aqua, turquoise, whatever you want to call it, blue-green. Glorious. Here we have taffy, and taffy is an absolutely beautiful bright blue. Sparkly, gorgeous. It's like a Ceylon sapphire that you would see in a jewelry gallery or something like that. Not to be confused with their actual pigment called Sapphire, which is a really deep cornflower blue. Glorious too. I didn't use it in this particular piece because I just didn't have any mixed up at the time. I would have, and maybe next time I will, but hey, sometimes there's a limit. <laughs> I'm really bad with limits, but you know, I occasionally try to enforce one or two on myself. Twilight. It is sparkly like the vampires in Twilight, but it is purple. I don't often associate purple with vampires. So that's a good thing. Now, if they had a really like deep, bloody red color, actually now that I think about it, they do, it's called Grenache. They could have named it Vampire. Twilight Vampire. There's a color named Twilight too. It's pink, it's purple. Anyway, vampires, Christmas, it all works, right? Oh. 
I'm sorry if you can hear that. My cat is vomiting. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. This final color is Glisten. Glisten is a two-tone interference color, and an interference color means that it looks white uh, when it goes on, well, white-ish, and as it dries, it reflects different colors. So this is a little bit of blue and a little bit of green, and it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it looks at rather opalescent, but it makes for some really great depth, some really cool shimmer, and I have layered it all over the rainbow. My scarf is choking me, it's trying to kill me. So I have layered Glisten all over the rainbow and I've also layered it around the rainbow. And that is going to play off the white too. So when I swipe this out, you'll see the Glisten on the white and it really brings out some glorious like shimmer and sheen. And that's where you really see that kind of blue green shift. I have yet to try it on black, but I cannot wait. I have 10 million ideas and approximately three hours a week to do this stuff. So, you know, the backlog is pretty incredible at this point. All right, adding a little bit more pillow paint so it slides off the edges. It took me a while to layer the rainbow on and some of that paint around the edges dried or just kind of went away. So adding a bit more, smoothing it out so I get a very good surface to swipe on. Today I am painting on a 12 by 12 canvas and that's 12 inches by 12 inches, <laughs> not centimeters. And my pillow paint is Walmart's Color Place in white satin. You just pick it up off the shelf and go. Hmm, hmm, whatever am I doing? Yeah, just choosing a flight pattern. Playing cards. If you've watched any of my videos lately, you'll know that I really like the waxy playing cards that you get at the dollar store for swiping tools. I applied my cell activator directly to the card. For this painting, I am using two different cell activators. The first one is the black, and that is Australian Flow Troll and Golden's Carbon Black. There's a few different paints you can use, but that for me has been the best. A lot of people like Amsterdam, I think Amsterdam works exceedingly well with the US Floetrol, but I can't make it work with Aussie Floetrol for the life of me. I'm also using white, and that is Australian Floetrol, and I'm gonna slaughter this Atelier. 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 It's Atelier. Atelier. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Golden carbon black. I really can't get this to focus, sorry. The word I'm not sure how to pronounce in interactive acrylic, in white, titanium white. Ah, that's an important note, titanium white. You need it to be titanium because it needs to be very, very heavy to sink. And you need your cell activator to sink in order for it to work through, you know, part the literal Red Sea is here since it's, you know, a biblically significant holiday, we're going to part the paint. And to do that, you need a heavy cell activator. It needs to be thin and it needs to sink, okay? When you are doing a bloom, blowing it out with a hairdryer, with your mouth, with a straw, whatever, you want a very thin cell activator. And that's because it has to go down into the caldera and then disperse, right? So when you're doing a swipe, since it's on the surface and you're pulling it, you're using that friction to bring the paint, <laughs> the cell activator through the paint. So you use a slightly thicker formulation. For instance, when I do blooming, I do a four to one formulation, four to one, uh, the four being the flow trawl and the one being the paint. And when I swipe, I do three to one. So three parts flow trawl to one part paint. Strangely, Amsterdam white works great with Australian Floetrol for me too, but not at all with US Floetrol. See, so much of this is science and experimentation and you have to be willing to make a lot of messes and uh, wade through an ocean of frustration. An ocean, a Pacific ocean, but you'll get there. You'll get there as long as you don't give up. That's the key. Don't give up, keep going. Ask for help. We're here to help you, all of us YouTube paint pourers. Everybody likes a good continuity error, right? 
<laughs> After I was filming and changed my clothes, I realized I forgot to tell you something. All of the recipes I am using today are the Chalet Art Recipes, and my pouring medium and cell activator are listed in the description below, but let me tell you, I use untinted base paint. I am one of those jerks who, when Sherwin-Williams announced they were discontinuing their HGTV <laughs> you know, ultra deep base that we all love so much. I found a bunch and bought it all. <laughs> Since I stockpiled, I don't need to think about switching bases for a while. If you don't have any, this is a good time to join the Shilly Art community. I've got a 15% off coupon to join the program because we hang out and we troubleshoot a lot and we try new bases and we try new things so if you don't have what i've got there's probably a good substitute the general recipe for my pouring medium is four to one to one four parts untinted base paint one part josonia gloss varnish and one part triple thick verithane that is different than polyacrylic verithane is its own thing triple thick okay got it and now back to our regularly scheduled programming and the original outfit I'm just getting real abstract with this. There was a lot of paint left over on my cards, so I smeared it on and then smeared it back onto the painting with a palette knife. I didn't really have... I didn't have a vision for the end of this. All I knew is I wanted to play with all of the, well, a large portion of the spectrum of the This Little Piggy pigments and white and black cell activator on a white background and I just wanted to see what happened. So I just took full artistic license and sometimes I think that's the best way to go when you don't have a preconceived notion of how it's going to turn out because it freaks you. It allows you to try different things like, oh look at this puddle of cell activator, I think I will just get a palette knife and draw it to the edge. or. In this case, I added some cell activator just to the tip of the palette knife and ran it through. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I thought, hey, why not? If you don't know already, I love to speed up my videos because I have ADHD and it drives me nuts, 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 nuts to watch really, really long videos. And I'm not going to do that to you. So I'm going to tell you that in real life, I <laughs> around with this for a good 30, 35 minutes. I tilted it, I spun it, I blew on it with a straw in different places, I added more paint, uh, pillow paint, and I swiped it, and I, I did all sorts of stuff. I'm going to condense that <laughs> 30 minutes to literally just the time I'm talking right now, but please know, it takes some time. You know, uh, there's this misconception that fluid art is this fast, 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 and it's done. It doesn't, it doesn't always go like that. There are so many things that you can do because it's art, right? It, whatever it turns out as, doesn't it doesn't have to stay like that if you're not fond of it. You know, if you're like, mm, I don't really like this composition, guess what? You can add to it. You can embellish it. You can redo parts of it. You can add more. You can keep going. I didn't like this at first, so I just kept working with it working and spinning and spinning and blowing and tilting, I ended up with something that I thought was really fabulous. I sent a picture to my friend right when I was done and he said, oh, it looks like a phoenix. And I thought, yeah, you know, it does look like a phoenix and it feels like a phoenix because at first I thought it was a pile of garbage, but it's not. I ended up really, really loving this. So if you're not super happy with your pour right away, work it, work on it. Take a step back and know that since it's art and it's your art, you can do anything with it that you want. You can blow glitter at it. You can dump rhinestones all over it. Hell, you can sweep the carpet and just throw all the dust on there because that's art, isn't it? Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Except to me who's telling you to be completely free with it. Make it your own. Don't think that just because a lot of fluid artists spin it once or twice and it's perfect that that's how it has to be for you. It doesn't. Art is an opportunity to express yourself, so express yourself. <laughs> be as crazy or unpredictable as possible. You know, just let inspiration carry you. Let inspiration guide what you're gonna do with your paint, with your palette knife, with your breath. See, yeah, inspiration, breath. Bring it back home for a second. 
Please like and share this video and please subscribe to my channel because I am the paint pourer on YouTube who is going to use the least amount of your time and teach you as much as I possibly can in a short amount of time as possible. That's a hell of a sales pitch, isn't it? <laughs> oh, all right. It's time for me to go clean up some cat vomit and then pack up the presents and head to my folks' house and enjoy a beautiful cold Wisconsin Christmas. Thanks for watching. Now go get your paint on.